so yeah, so the the topic that I wanted to start off with, it's a it's a light topic. Uh, it's the singularity. <laughs> and so specifically, one of the things that you talked about on that panel at NYU was this idea of there being six singularities. And so that was something that completely blew my mind. In fact, for me, it seems it seemed up until that point that kind of inherently in the word singularity, it almost sounds like single. And so <laughs> it's like I kind of thought there'd be just this single point beyond which we cannot predict the future. But yeah, you talked about six singularities then. So I'd love to open the floor to you to bring those up to our audience now. Yeah, of course. So I, I guess I guess we know the history perhaps of, of, of the word singularity. It comes from physics. Um, it's to do with kind of black holes and, and a point in time and space that we can't see beyond. And it was adopted by the AI community, Ray Kurzweil, um, to refer to the technological singularity, which is um, at the point in time where we build um, a super intelligence. A good friend of mine, um, Callum Chase, um, coined the term the economic singularity. I'd highly recommend his books. Um, uh, he's, he's written a lot over the past three decades on um, what happens when we automate the majority of human labor. And again, it's potentially a point in time that we can't see beyond. And you know, having discussed the impact of AI with people over the past you know, 10, 15, 20 years, you realize you know, we're facing into interesting challenges um, uh, or events in humanity, such as curing death or um, even our environmental singularity, the point in time where we might um, uh, either lose control of our ecosystem or completely gain control of our ecosystem. So I realized when, when I, I heard these words, technology, economic, environmental, that those were three of the words that um, that are a part of the PESTL framework. So if anybody's done a business degree, um, they, they'll have probably come across PEST analysis or PESTL analysis, which is essentially um, four or, or six macro words um, that uh, they re refer to political, um, environmental, social, technological, legal, and environmental, um, and or, or economic, I can't remember. And, uh, the, um, and then I asked myself, well, is there a PESTL of singularities? Um, are, are there are there points in time that we can't see beyond that can relate these six um, uh, six macro words? And I'm you know, very happy to go into the detail if you, if that would be helpful. I would, and I'm also I'm going to try to make sure that I got these down right. So pestle spelled P E S T E L uh, or L E, I guess. Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, and it doesn't really matter in terms of getting all the words in there. So P for political, one of the E's for environmental, social. Technological, another E for economic, yeah. and L for legal. That's right. Okay, sweet. Yeah, let's dig into them. Yeah, so I, I guess the p political singularity, and you know, when I was thinking about this, this was you know four or five years ago, um, you know, around the time of Cambridge Analytica, and and actually like things like Brexit, and I was just seeing the impact that AI um, was having on our political foundations, challenging in fact our political foundations, and. Uh, that sort of raised the question of what happens if we start to live in a world where we can't, we, we don't know what is true. So 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 either we, we create a world where we don't have any faith in what is being presented to us, uh, deep fakes, misinformation bots, etc. Or there's a future world where we're able to know what is true and authenticate what is true. And um, and so the, the political singularity is that is the point in time where we either can or can't authenticate what is true. Um, and uh, I think mean, one of the biggest fears that we have currently at the kind of governmental level is 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 us losing trust trust in our social systems and what what happens if we can't cannot determine what we're engaging with it, it is true and I guess that that sort of extends a little bit more to not just our political foundations but also the fabric of our reality you know I know people who are currently being attacked by um, uh, deep fakes of their um, of their children or, or their work colleagues and um, and in fact a few months ago the CEO of WPP was um, was 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 deep faked and a clone of him was created and somebody tried to kind of use it for malicious reasons. So so the question is, what happens uh, in, in a world where we don't know what is true and how do we mitigate that risk? So that's political singularity. The the, the second um, singularity is environmental singularity, and uh, we you know we all know that the AI is increasing sub consumption, and, and as far as I'm concerned, um, consumption gives people access to goods and services that typically enrich people live people's lives and. You know, we know it's putting pressure on our planetary boundaries. We know there are people that overconsume, <laughs> but I guess, I guess, you know, there's two potential outcomes in the future. One is that we lose control of our our, our, our ecosystem, um, or we gain control over it. And, and actually, I'm very hopeful that if we apply algorithms, if we apply AI in the right way to solving problems across supply chains, making it much more efficient, much more effective, we could we could 
significantly reduce the amount of energy that we need to um, to run this planet. And things like helping us figure out nuclear fusion, so being able to contain the plasma inside a nuclear fusion reactor to keep the reaction going, maybe help us devise new ways. There's interesting things uh, by by you in London there. There's a number of nuclear fusion groups in Oxford, um, including First Light Fusion, which is use, it's propelling a, a pellet at very high speed that somehow it creates this collision. It's inspired by the way that like rainbow shrimp can create like those really crazy reactions to kill their prey underwater. They generate this like super high speed um, attack with a claw that produces bubbles. And when the bubbles collapse, it causes their prey shell to break apart. And wow. um, it's, it's inspired by that. So there's these, these um, alternative ways of trying to come up with fusion um, nuclear fusion, and that research came out of simulations. And so, you know, there's there's all these different ways that you could imagine AI helping us with not only the kinds of things, the energy expenditure, like you mentioned there, like supply chain issues, but also potentially with creating an ab- abundant source of fuel on the planet. Exactly. And I think the point here is that, is that you know, when we hear the word, the, the singularities, we often default to the, the negative. You know what happens if we create a post-truth world but the point is is that actually we could use ai we could use technology to to prevent the post-truth world we could use an ai to help us and um, get control over our ecosystem by creating new energy sources and again it's something that obviously deep mind has also been investing in as well it's how to how to solve um, fusion um so the, the the third singularity is it's actually not my expertise it's uh, sometimes often referred to as the methuselarity um and it's the the, the point in time where we cure death now um, from what I understand, there are scientists that believe there are people alive today that don't have to die. And the AI is obviously rapid, rapidly in advancing medicine. It's able to monitor ourselves. And eventually, we'll have you know, nanobots potentially clean our, clean, cleaning ourselves out. And, and in a bit like a car, if you still have proper damage, that car will never, ever break down. And you know, I don't know what the world will look like if we realize there are people amongst us that won't have to die. It will change, I guess, how we educate ourselves, the relationships that we have. It changes the complete dynamic of what a lifespan looks like. And the way that you'd live a life, because imagine if you can live forever, you wouldn't want to go outside, take any risks at all. You'd spend a good chunk of your thinking time just trying to make sure that you can keep it coming along, that you're not going to get hit by a bus or contract a disease. Um, so, yeah, that's an interesting, it's an interesting world, a risk-free world. Yeah, well, actually, there are sort of obviously precursors to this. Um, there's, a, there's actually a company that have just been formed called, I think, t- t- tomorrow.bio. And for I think, I think it's like twenty five dollars a month, you subscribe to this essentially this cryogenic um, service. That if you die, they will freeze you. So for twenty five dollars a month, if you die, they'll mm-hmm. go and freeze you. Now you have to pay a lump sum of you know I think it's like seventy thousand dollars to freeze your head or two hundred thousand dollars to freeze your body. Uh, and nobody knows if you can be unfrozen. But you know there mm-hmm. are people actually now that are being frozen uh, with the hope that they become um, unfrozen at some point in the future. Mm-hmm. That's wild. You it's know. the kind of thing that I'm aware vaguely is going on, but it's really trippy to think about, you know, if a loved one was coming close to the end and you're like, all right, we're just not going to end it. <laughs> yeah. Put her in the freezer. Indeed. Uh, so the, the the fourth singularity, you know, actually one of my favorite singularities um, is the technological singularity. And of course, I think this is the po- probably the most popular one, which is which is the point in time where we where, where we build a machine that's you know a million times smarter than us. It's uh, it's um it's a point in time where we become the second most intelligent species on this planet. So there's been a, a lot of um, uh, books written about this, and and um, I guess I, I flippantly you know advise people that when superintelligence comes, look busy, be nice to each other, and hopefully it will bugger off to a different dimension. Uh, and and I guess my community, and you know you would be able to tell me better, uh, John, based on all of the people that you've spoken to, but my community I guess felt this wasn't going to happen for another thirty or forty years. We we now think it might happen in the next ten or twenty years. In fact, I was sort of found myself. Um, forgive me for name dropping on, on, on a yacht with Elon Musk um, three weeks ago in Cannes, and uh, we were talking about superintelligence because I was pitching uh, a company idea to him, and uh, and he thinks that we're a year away from from superintelligence. And I guess Sam Altman might suggest that we are uh, you know, four or five years away. Um, but it, but we, we could be close to building a machine that, that is that is a million times smarter than us. And going back to the the, the pestle of singularities, the, the the legal singularity, 
um, is uh, the, the point in time where surveillance becomes ubiquitous. And I guess what I mean by this is that is that we've probably all seen the minority report um, where we, you had these what are called precogs that were able to see you know into the future a few minutes, and and, and people would then use that that vision to um, to prevent crime before it happens. And you know what what would the world look like if if we were able to understand people deeply, predict their behaviours, um, and uh, you know that's an incredibly powerful position to be in. WBP is in in the position of understanding perception and influencing perception. You know we want people to 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 buy um, buy goods through through ads, uh, but that 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 um, that ability to understand people, uh, understand perception, and influence perception is an incredibly powerful position, and we want to mitigate. The risk of that that capability being used by states or bad actors from you know using that power to accumulate more wealth and more power. So there's a good reason to to be able to understand people, but you could also be potentially using these technologies for for malicious reasons. Um, the, the the final singularity is actually my favourite singularity. It was coined by my friend Callum Chase, which is the economic economic uh, singularity. And and I guess for the past you know 17 years, I've been I've been building AIs that have been freeing people from doing repetitive um, structured tasks. Right? Those people have actually not lost their jobs. Um, they've gone on to do more impactful, more purposeful, valuable things within their organizations. And my prediction is, is that over the next 10 years, we're gonna see a Cambrian explosion of new innovations, new opportunities for people to contribute. I think jobs will be displaced and disrupted, but AI is like a new energy source. And that will allow humanity to grow. Going back to your point, there's more people now being more free to come up with, you know, use their brains, use their minds to to come up with new innovations that actually, you know, make makes makes humanity grow to another level. And now, I think the the point is is that beyond ten years, I don't think really anybody knows what they're talking about. And and I think you probably know the two extremes of the argument. The one extreme of the argument is that is it if we can free up whole jobs because of using AI, we we probably will. Right, the pressure. To reduce costs, increase profits within our organisations, that that pressure means that we probably will will um, uh, free up whole jobs. Uh, and and if that happens very quickly, if lots lots of jobs are, are are displaced, our economies won't be able to rebalance, and it could lead to social unrest. I think, you know there are questions like UBI and four day working week and other mechanisms that might take the edge off some of those um, ch challenges. I mean the opposite and you know other extreme or school of thought. Is that is that we should be accelerating as fast as possible to the economic singularity? Uh, the idea is that if you do free people from jobs, in, in theory, you'll you'll be you're able to reduce the the cost of those goods. If you can reduce the friction from the creation and dissemination of food, healthcare, education, energy, you can bring the cost of those goods down to zero or almost zero. So imagine, you know, if we applied our our smarts in the right way over the next ten years. And we created a world of abundance, a world where everybody has access to the goods that they need to survive and thrive. Um, now, I, you know, I know lots of people who don't have jobs, right? The, the, those people are not sitting at home bored and depressed. They are usually using their time to, to you know, to, to, to spend more time with their family, to, um, to indulge in their hobbies, uh, to travel, to enrich their lives. But it, what happens if you, if you push people hard enough and say, look, what would you do if you didn't have to do paid work and everything was free? They'll, they'll go and do all of those things I've mentioned, but if you keep pushing people hard enough, they'll, they'll say the same thing, which is, I want to do something that contributes to humanity. I think we all have an innate desire to want to make the world a bit better. And, and you know, unfortunately, you know, all of us are pretty much born into economic constraints, preventing us from doing that. We're, we're forced to live only for ourselves. And, and, and I think that if we, if we use AI in the right way, we could create a world where people are able to live beyond themselves. And actually, that's the purpose of, of Satalia, my company. Is to create a world where everybody is is economically free to use their creativity to contribute to humanity however they want. Fantastically stated. I love that. Uh, that is a really well articulated vision of something that I'm absolutely on board with as well. Something I think about a lot, and that I hope to with literally things like this podcast. I hope to switch people's minds onto oh. You know, I don't just need to be building an algorithm to be able to predict a stock price movement you know, two milliseconds faster than my competitor, um, I could actually be helping with unlocking nuclear fusion or making a big social impact. And so that's a big part of what drives me. You articulated it so well there that an economic singularity would free basically everyone up 
to be able to think about how can I make the world better because you're not just worried about feeding your family, educating your family, making sure that there's a roof over your head. 